Welcome back, everybody, to the Nerdcore Podcast, the podcast that reviews the movies and talks that nerd shit. This is episode 689, and it is your review of Kineta. As always, it is the nerds you kind of hear to host the show. Very tired and sleepy. <clears throat> Alongside my wonderful co host, Brad, Young Yoda. So sorry, everybody. Welcome to a wonderful, wonderful Monday night. Where the time is right, and we are here early and alive and early free and alive. on patreon.com slash the nerdcore, where you get this episode live, ad free, and early before anybody else gets to watch it on Tuesdays at 12 p.m. Central Time. Thank you guys so much for bearing with us during this crazy last week. I promise. I'm not going on vacations anytime soon unless another clo- a cousin really close to me like this decides to go. Even though my dad kind of said, hey, we should go to Puerto Rico one time. And I'm like, <laughs> I was like Puerto Rico. I'm like, that's cool. I know, man. But like, I just don't want to be on a plane for fucking. What's the, I don't want to be at an airport for eight hours again. Seven, eight hours. Um, But um, we thank you guys so much for bearing with us. Uh, today, we're going to be concluding our review for Yorgos Lantimos Mont here on the public. But if you want to see the official con- uh, conclusion, it's going to be on patreon.com slash the nerdcore at the $5 tier where you get the episode uh, uh, where, where you get the mini pod uh, review of the favorite. But before we can get into the review, Brad, what you, how you doing, Brad? I'm, I'm up and at him. <laughs> I mean, it's been a day. It has been a day, and I won't elaborate. <laughs> work was work, and uh, yeah. This rain, um, I don't know what it is with Arizona and rain, but it, it does something to people. And it's, it's not always good. <laughs> no, it's like Houston, right, Brad? Don't nobody what's got, got any goddamn sense in their mind when, no. they, when it rains. No, no. I, I mean, it's like a full moon when it comes out. And then some stuff you do, like at work, and it's just like, look, I mean, I understand, but at the same time, I'm overburdened with a lot of projects. Please, please don't put any more on me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, no, your management is like, God damn it. <laughs> I'm going to go work at McDonald's. Fuck this. <laughs> Brad's I'll go. I'll go get yelled at in retail. Well, zap that fucking. <laughs> um, I'm so tired. <laughs> all the time. Yeah, hey, Brad, you're like, God, management position at McDonald's sounding real good right now. <laughs> Shit. At least you get free food. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think you still get free food. I don't know. I know you used to get free food. I used to. So I had friends who worked at Subway. Back when I was um, first started college, man, I was getting free food all the goddamn time. It was getting so bad that management had to tell my friends stop giving me free food. <laughs> I was going there like every day for like half a sandwich, half a sandwich and like a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brad, um, I, I'm, I hope you're feeling better, man. Um, as I explained on the live show, I'm just I'm, I'm dealing with some serious, serious, serious sleepiness. So I'm just so tired. I'm tired. I'm ready to go to bed. Uh, but like I said, I'm, I'm ready to go to dinner at, at some point. So yeah, I feel you. like I said, I went to work today. I did my job. I came back, and I'm ready to just get this over with. Once this clock strikes nine o'clock, I am picking this my little happy ass that bed, and I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed. And uh, we'll see how that goes. But for now, that's all we got. Um, yeah, guys, um, we're going to be getting this going. So if you guys have not seen the film and you care about spoilers, you should probably get out of here. But if you don't care about spoilers or you already seen the film, you can go ahead and stay. Either way, how it goes is your one and only spoiler warning. And it is, in effect, in a five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Also, I don't know what my hair is doing today. I, mean, I don't know why you haven't pressed the what's it called the oh. the banner. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Today's episode of the Nerdcore is brought to you by SeaGeek. Whether you want to see your favorite band. 
sports team, or comedian, SeatGeek has you covered. We're proud to be partnering with SeatGeek to offer you $10 off your first order with code THENERDCORE. That's $10 off your first order at SeatGeek.com with code T-H-E-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P-S. So take a seat at your next live event with SeatGeek. Thank you. Now let's get back to today's video. Kineta is a 2005 Greek experimental psychological drama film produced by Athena Rachel Singadi and directed by Yorgos Lantimos. It is Lantimos' sole directorial debut. It was written by Lanti uh, Yorgos Lantimos in Yorgos Kakenakis. It stars Evangel Evangelia Rondu, Aris Servetalis, and Costas Zikominos. Zikominos. Uh, cinematography is done by Thimios Bakatakis. Bakatakis. Edited by, okay, I know how to say this now. Uh, edited by Yorgos Mavrops, Mavropsaradis. Saridis. 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 Um, Mavrops Saridis. And uh, it sits at about an hour and 35 minutes. No budget reported. No box office reported. Um, I will read this storyline that was written by Nick uh, Reganis Rig on um, on what's it called? Uh, IMDb. Um, uh, during off-season at the Greek Sun Seaside Resort of Kineta, three perfect strangers, a police officer out of uniform, a, and with a thing for German luxury cars and Russian women, an eccentric photographer, a ho and a hotel chambermaid join forces for a rather strange re reason to recreate homicides meticulously and with an almost ritualistic approach. The unlikely chill reenact re crime scenes of brutal murders to the point where the boundaries of their own private lives slowly begin to blur. Does this lion lead so alliance lead somewhere? Um, so, um, wow. Okay. So this is the first time that uh, Yorgos directs something by himself. So um, I have to say, that was not the biggest fan of this movie. Um, I think that visually looks great. You see so much of Yorgos in here from the other films, like very much in, in the way that he constructs his style, the way that he constructs his atmosphere. Like it still somewhat gets under your skin to the point where it's just like, like, these guys are so fucking weird. Like, why are you guys doing this? And, you know, it's it's very invasive. And that's what I've, what I've learned through Yorgos' movies is that his films are very invasive. Not in the sense of the, um, of, you know, the senses, but more so, like, what is being done within the movie. And um, I, I, I like aspects of that. But overall, like I, just, I don't like this movie. I think it's very, very rough, but very solid. It's very solid ground to start with. But I think it's one of those instances where it's very experimental to the point that it kind of loses what it's trying to say. But Brad, what are your initial thoughts? Uh, my initial thoughts on this is I'm just wondering how we ended up watching two movies with little did no dialogue in the span of like less than a month, <laughs> which does not help this movie because goodbye dragon in was so good with like no dialogue. Yeah. And that's where I think this might hurt itself as I had watched this. I had watched goodbye dragon so close to this and it was another basically no dialogue movie um, a little bit, but not much. Um, I mean, this is not the movie that I would try and to get someone to watch Yorgos movies. This is not no. the first one I would no. recommend someone watch if they want to try and get into Yorgos movies. I mean, I, I might recommend the lobster killing of a sacred deer. I think those yeah. demonstrate him at a, at a level, you know, that's far greater than this. Like, I, I agree with you. You see the start of where he's going with this. It's weird fucking movie. I mean, is it like, is it really out there and all that? No. Once you kind of understand what he's trying to go for, like at the beginning, you're like, what are these people doing? And then you're like, oh, that dude's a detective. And these, that's a photographer that gets hired for these murder scenes. And then she's kind of the reenactor 
that. Okay. And once you kind of get that, it, it kind of makes more sense. But at the beginning of this movie, for the first, what, 30 to 45 minutes, you're just left like, what am I doing? What's my thing? Like... <laughs> <laughs> but once once you get past that it's like okay now i understand what they're doing um but also i i, I mean you can see some of the style like some of the acting's very rigid and i mean you get that with some of the, some of the movies like killing of a sacred deer it was very monotone kind of esque but i i think this movie hurts from that there's no dialogue because yorgos is so good at his dialogue yeah. And yeah. I, I think that's just this movie just suffers because we've watched Yorgos all month and this movie suffers from lack of dialogue because the and I think that's something that he realizes going into like dog tooth. He's like, oh, wait, like, like I'm, I, I can I can do the experimental thing and I can do the show uh, what's called say less and do more. Uh, but there's something when there that can be done when you find that balance. Yeah. Like the, like like he you're a good writer, Yorgos. You, like, yes, you just, you can write dialogue. You're up there in Tarantino esque of writing dialogue. Like, you're fucking good at it. Like, use it. <laughs> yeah. And so, but like, like I said, man, I what's it called? Um, it's, it's you know for a, for a start, like, pfft. oh no, it's like the, the, you you see the pieces. Like yeah. after watching all of Yorgos's stuff this month, you see the pieces of where he started with and where yeah. he's going. So it, it, it's kind of nice in a way, but it, it's also this this movie. Like like I said, had I not watched Goodbye Dragon Inn, I might not think yeah. um, so differently of this. But Goodbye Dragon Inn does like some great, amazing shit with no dialogue, yeah. and, and like, that's just missing here. It's just to me, it's not a mess, but I gotta admit, it's it's a bit incoherent to the point where it's like, okay, like I understand what they're trying to do here, like they're trying to recreate, but like. Why? Like, what are they getting out of this between I, each other and there's relationships that well, they're building with each other? Like, I, I mean, are we just point- seeing three like really weird individuals come together to form a reenactment of these murder scenes, which is kind yeah. of cool. If I mean, I was kind of thinking, okay, like if I'm this woman and I'm putting myself, you know, in these murdered women's shoes, which she's doing apparently constantly, I mean, that might be why she's trying to kill herself. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean this thing can go deeper. Like we, we could like look into this way deeper and there might be stuff to find. No. But is, is it as good as as deep as say the lobster? No. No. Now I have to say, um, it's not the same concept, but sort of similar in a way. But his 2011 film Alps does this type of thing a lot better. And I think it's a lot more heart well, not heartful, but I feel like it's a lot more. A fool, and it's like has a lot more to say. Um, but like, I just I fear I hear it was just like I just I don't think the writing's as strong as it is on the other films, and I don't really know what these characters are doing, and I'm just kind of observing now to the point where it's like I just don't know anything. And but I, like, I mean, it's his first film; it makes yeah. sense. I mean, not not everyone's gonna be, you know. Their first film is going to be the fucking greatest success they ever had. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I have to say, though, and now, like, I don't know. I haven't rewatched. I'm going to rewatch the what's it called? The favorite uh, soon. But, like, I really think, man, I think Poor Things might be my favorite one from him. Like, this this might be it. Like, I think this, my Poor Things might be my favorite, man. Because I think they're like. But I think like all of these movies, he's had to experience making all of these to get to that point. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, to, to figure out exactly yeah. how he it's, wants to make his vision. And I, I, I'll, I'll admit, um, this movie's weird. All yeah. Yorgos's movies are fucking weird. But Brad, I have to say this. Um, it never feels like to me that Yorgos does these things for shock. No. Like, even though I don't know what he's trying to say, I can tell you that there's something that is being said with that. I, I, I like think nothing in all is these... happening on that frame just for the fuck of it. No, I, I think in all these movies, there's a reason. And I, I, I mean, I hate to be like the, the art critic guy, but there's like a deeper reason between no. like what he does. I, I mean, it's like dog tooth dog tooth. 
it very it, it's, it's set in like a, a house in a backyard but it is a very very you know it's a very it's something that could happen that dog tooth is something that could happen this same thing i, I yeah. mean it, it's films that are weird in themselves but at the same time you're like i mean that's relatable there, there's there's stuff there and that that makes like your stomach churn even more because you're just mm -hmm. like oh like you know parents could you know keep their feral children inside and never introduce them to society and tell them whatever the fuck yeah. they want and, and, and this you could have three weirdos you know on their days off go and reenact murder scenes yep yep so like to me it's just that's that's always kind of what attracts me to these movies and i think that's what like when i'm watching this that's why i kind of said like oh that's why um i kind of just kept watching like some i i don't understand the damn thing that's happening but my eyes are still glued to the screen yeah, and i'm still I mean, watching i mean there's a I have, part I'm curious there's a part yeah the curiosity and there's a part of yorgos's movie i mean it, and it's happened in like almost all his movies i'm trying to figure out what he's what he's doing like where this movie's going and, and i mean i mean that's a special talent when you 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 know you can keep your regular viewer glued to the screen trying to figure out what the hell it is you're trying to say yeah and, and not be overly spectacular in the visuals like there's nothing like there, there's no like david lynch fucking visuals going on in these movies i i mean most of them are are pretty you know pretty clear cut you know, normal happenings. Yeah. And I, and I think, I think that's why I like that. We watched this the way we did this far into, at least for me too. Like, like, you know, this being like the second to last Yorgos I need to watch from him other than of course his new film. Right. Because like, I can at least say that I've seen where it all begins from. And I see where like, where, where him alone in that chair I know exactly what he's kind of going for. And I know that as time passes and the more films he makes, he's actually able to create that style more and he's able to refine it. So, well, and and I, I mean, I, I think, I think it's what you said on the recent acolyte review for the live show episode four. I, I mean, you, you're going to have people who love these movies and you're going to have people who hate these movies. There's no in between, I don't think, yeah. with Yorgos. Like, I'm sure there's somebody who thinks this is the greatest movie he's ever made. Uh, of course, I mean, I don't doubt that. And then there's gonna there's people who pan, um, you know, fucking the lobster. Like, sure, I know, but, but there's no one in the middle. The no one in, in the middle. I don't think going to a Yorgos movie, meh. I don't yeah. see that. Like, I don't even like like you know some of these. I'm going well. That's not good as the other one, but it's fucking weird. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> like I I've generally liked all these movies, so I I mean they're they're on my wavelength. I mean these are really fucking good. These are fun to watch. Yeah. yeah, so I appreciate like what he's doing here. I just I can't. I it, it just doesn't work for me, and it just doesn't you know interest me that much to the point where I can say like I'm I know what you're doing, and I and I really like it because I I just it just didn't do it for me, man. And, I blame um, Goodbye Dragon. That's what I blame. <laughs> if I had not watched Goodbye Dragon in, if this had been my my had been the movie I watched with little to no dialogue first, I might have a different opinion on it. But Goodbye Dragon in, God damn it! <laughs> oh my god, I'm trying to see if I can find a five star review here for this movie. There probably because, is um, one. There has been. I, one. I would like to see what they think. What do, they you think Ra, do you think? Do you think Ebert? No, he didn't get to this. What year did he die? 2004? Hollywood Reporter hit it. Let me see. Oh my god, Tico, you wrote a big paragraph, dog. Here we go. Uh, this film is a series of scenes. So this is from Adriana Montenegro. This film is a series of scenes filled with uh, unmotivated actions that reflect a reality of modern society. These scenes express the, mon the, the mon monotony of uh, today's meaningless actions the characters need to recreate intense and violent murder scenes and an apparent consequence for the lack of meaning in their lives i believe the yorgos lantimos utilizes this specific visual imagery as a way to merely suggest we philosophically analyze the autonomy the mon monotony uh silences 
uh, and pauses in our daily life that say so much, yet we choose to avoid the fact that there's hardly any dialogue, music, or sounds uh, specifically at the end of the film as it transitions into the credit, forces us to view the film as a mirror. The terribly awkward silence fell during most of the film, and the credits reflects back to us to the aspects of our lives that lack meaning, and more importantly, reflects our own inability to sit still, to look closely at ourselves, and to create nothing more than silence from the apparent nothingness in our lives. I, I mean, I can get where you're going with that. I can get where you're going with that. Uh, don't, don't think it's, what's it called? Uh, <laughs> all right, guys. Somebody puts funnier than Barry Lyndon. That's funny. Um <clears throat> Don't think I quite a what's it called think that he does a great job of trying to interpret or reflect that in this film, but I can see where you're coming from. Yeah. Um I, I don't think he reviewed it, right, Brad? Hmm? No, I don't think he reviewed not, it. I did not find anything where you were reviewed. Well, this movie was never released in the United States uh, like theatrically. Uh, it was, was shown at a at a fuck at a museum for one day um in 2019 and that's it. Actually, nine days. In nine October. Days, sorry. Yeah, that's it. Museum of the Moving Image. Yeah. Which is in, where is it? Ah, Queens, New York City. Yeah, of course. Of course. But, yeah, guys, just not impressed. Um, I just, well, not like, not I mean, impressed. Com comparatively. Narratively, narratively, not impressed. Yeah, comparatively. Yeah. But, like I said, very solid. And I see where he see where he starts, and I think that says a lot for what what's it called uh, for his career. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drop that five out of ten. And I'm sorry, Brad. What is your final verdict? I think I'm gonna give it a little higher than that. I mean, it's Yorgos, so I think I'm gonna give it like a six, six out of ten. All right, all right, Brad. Um, not a massive uh, what's it called a. <laughs> difference like the last one that we did no it's not, it's not i mean it, it's not a bad movie like it's worth a watch if you want to see where yorga started it's just i'm after a month of watching orgos movies it's just like okay i can i can see like these were better yeah <laughs> these were a lot better i do have to say brad i'm like i'm telling you man what's it called do you think that brad in that first two years of doing this podcast would have liked these movies fuck no i mean i don't I mean, especially the little to no dialogue movies, not the silent yeah. film, but just little to no dialogue. I think he he would have had a rough go of it. Um, <laughs> just just with, with the lack of movie knowledge and, you know, experience, just like what you're looking for in in a good movie or good television show. Um, what's exciting? Yeah, probably not. And how how to overly describe what you're feeling with these movies also would not have been there. I I, I think old me would have just let you take lead of the talking and <laughs> been like I don't I don't know. Um, was the director like you let drunk? Me to dry, let me to dry with that hereditary review. Yeah, you're like well, I don't know what else to say. He's like <laughs> well, you can try to to like. I I think I I think I need to go back because. I was not digging hereditary at all. I know, but at least you could have more words. And I mean, I'm like, yeah, but I think I, I think now if I go back and I watch, I could. Four although I, of... although was I, I might've been sick. I, I might've been sick during that review. I don't remember. <laughs> and I was just tired. I'm just like, yeah. fuck this movie. <laughs> but that, uh, that concludes our Kinetta review. And we thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, Check out our website, nerdcore.com, Twitter at the Nerdcore, and score Instagram at the Nerdcore, TikTok at the, at the Nerdcore. Um, I should probably put our letterbox in there as well, too. We forget forgetting that we have our letterbox in there. Uh, Patreon.com slash Nerdcore. The $1 tier, you get this episode live and early and ad-free before anybody else gets to watch it. Um, Stacy was in chat, but he wasn't in here. What the hell? Um, Stacy, busy man. He just wanted to <laughs> listen to us grab about Acolyte and get out. <laughs> Discord link is in the description below, so... Check Stacey that out, was guys. in it for the drama. Yeah. Um, please make sure you're uh, leaving a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell. All that wonderful stuff. On the podcast side of things, leave a five-star review. Follow us on your favorite podcast. I have a choice. All that helps us out so much. We want to thank our patrons. Without them, it's not possible. We appreciate you guys so, 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 so much. 
We hope that you guys, we hope that everybody enjoys these episodes, but our patrons do make this possible by helping us out. I do want to give a huge shout out to our newest patron, Mel Matney, uh, who pledged to the $10 tier. Thank you so much, Mel, for pledging to us here and helping us with our goals to grow this a little bit more and having that monetary support to be able to, you know, help us out here. So thank you so much, Mel. We really do appreciate it. Uh, and of course, uh, you will see Mel in the, um, oh, sh crap, I did not put her in here. So the good thing is that I'm about to do it. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. That's why I didn't change it because I wanted to add Mel in there. Yeah. Um, so um, with that said, we thank you guys so much. Um, without further ado, um, Brad. Oh, I'm sorry. Tell them about our executive producer, Shane. Uh, you can follow our friend Shane at twitch.tv slash XSRK on Twitter at thrifted.io or go buy something from the Subby God at prisoncityvintage.com. Damn yeah. straight. Um, Brad, we still don't have a idea of what we're doing next month, but it's okay because we'll we, figure uh, it out. Because uh, it's, it's been a long couple of days and uh, we will be uh, able to give you guys more an idea when I'm coherent and I'm able to articulate myself without um feeling like my eyes are are sinking into my to my body um so we will see you guys then but for now um we thank you guys so much for being here and let's go ahead and get them out of here brad all right our only thing being hosts as always thank to all those who join us in future chats thank you to our listeners out there our patreon supporters we appreciate each and every one of you and to end this episode, um, I, I don't even know what to say about this. Movie. What do I say? Like, um, don't reenact murders on no. your off days? No. Yeah. They're just kind of yeah. weird. I mean, a bunch of weird loners. Young Yoda out. Big ass fun.